Hi there, Rick Leinecker here. This is the third in a series of three, uh, and this will be the final one in this series. Um, I'm going to use the same project we had, we, uh, we used for the second one. It's got the four backgrounds and the arrays, but I'm going to take some of the code out of there so the backgrounds don't actually change. Uh, you actually don't have to take that code out if you don't want. Um, but anyway, the first thing I need to do is explain about images. Um, I have an image on my desktop called Ball. Now you notice Hubble, these Hubble images, they're squares. But this Ball image, you'll notice that it, if I open it with um, Picture Viewer, you'll notice that it looks like it's, it's round and not square. That's because around here, in the corners, it's transparent. So ping or PNG images support this transparency. And you're going to have to use uh, PNG images um, if you want anything with transparency. Okay, so we got to put it into content folder. Notice the uh, asset name is ball, what you would expect. Okay, I'm going to create a new texture 2D object. Call this M OBJ ball. Now I'm going to be back adding more variables. I want to just baby step this, but for right now, we're going to go ahead and say x equals, we'll call it 200. And those are going to be the x and y coordinates where the ball will draw. Okay? So now we got to actually load this guy. And what I'm going to do is steal this code. Remember, copy and paste is your friend. Steal this code and edit it just a little bit. Okay, we're going to say OBJ ball. And here, instead of this, it'll just be the asset. And that's ball. Okay, so that loads in the ball. Just to make sure, let me go ahead and compile it. Let me go ahead and run. It'll crash if it, if it can't load the ball. Okay, it didn't crash. So it compiled, it ran. Just remember, if you get if your program crashes when you first run it, chances are it's one of these, and chances are the error you've made is that the asset name is incorrect. Okay, so the ball is loaded. Now we're going to go ahead and draw it. And we have to make sure we draw the background first. Remember the rule, he who draws last draws best. So make sure you draw the background because if you draw the ball first the background will, will draw over the ball. So sprite batch.draw m obj ball. Remember whatever the image you're drawing up above we're drawing the background. See here we're drawing the ball. Okay. And uh, I'm going to go to a new line just so it's easier for you to read. New rectangle and here we're going to draw at M and X, M and Y. Remember, up here we did 0, 0 because that's the upper left hand corner of the screen. M OBJ ball dot width. M OBJ ball dot height. Okay, comma, color dot white. And uh, I'm going to scroll over just a little bit so you can see the end of that line there. Okay. Okay, now that should draw. Let me go ahead and compile. And there's our ball. Oh crap, I said I was going to take out that alternating background. Let me do that real quick. What I'm going to do here, all we have to do is comment this out. We comment that out, then the code stays there, but um, the background will not alternate. Okay, so there's the ball. And there's the background. Okay, but we want to move the ball around. So, first thing we're going to do is declare two more variables. M and xdir equals one, yder. Okay, so those are going to represent the x direction and the y direction. Okay, and remember, 
we're going to do this, and then we're going to make refinements to it as we go. Um, I can guarantee you this, this first pass, it's not going to be exactly what we want in the end. So stay with me, and uh, we'll get there. So let's go to update now. Okay. Um, remember, this code really, it's still there, but it has no effect. Okay. So below that, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say x plus equals. So whatever the x direction is, whether it's positive 1 or negative 1, it's going to get added to x. And whatever the y direction is, will get added to the y variable. And as you go down here, these will change. And as these change, you will see that the ball moves around on the screen. Compile, run. See how that, that makes a, a change? Now that's not very good because the ball keeps going off the screen and we're never going to see it again. So what we have to do up here in our update, we have to check. We have to say if the x if x goes off the right hand side of the screen, screen width, what we're going to do is we're going to reset Exter, oops, to its opposite. So if it's positive, it'll become negative. It's if it's negative, it'll become positive. And we actually have to do this also. Otherwise, there's a funny thing that, that possibly could happen. Okay, so once again, this means it has gone off the right side of the screen because if x is greater than screen width. That means it's gone off the right side of the screen. So we reverse the x direction here, and then we kind of update x. We also have to make sure we have to see if, if it goes off the left side of the screen. That will be less than 0. If x is less than 0, it's gone off the left side of the screen. So here again, we, we really do the same thing. In fact, you guys who are very smart could combine this with this in a single statement, but uh, I'm not going to do that for right now. Maybe if you want to ask me or someone wants to post it on the blog, that'd be cool. So we have to do this exact same thing for y, and since I am a firm believer in copy and paste, I'm going to take this and I'm just going to change everything here to y, make these all y's, and this has to be screen height here. Okay. So now we're just making sure that if y goes off the screen, to the right or the bottom, it changes directions. Oh, is that wrong or right? Okay. No, okay, that's that's working. The only problem is we're looking at the left top corner of the ball, so it, is, it goes off the screen, but um, eventually corrects itself. So there's a way to fix that, actually. Okay, and we're going to fix that. This is okay. But this, we're going to say, if mnx plus m obj ball dot width. Okay, so we're also going to add the width. If x plus the width goes off the screen, um, then we're going to change directions. And you'll see the difference that makes in here, the height of the ball. See, if I compile, it's probably going to do more like what you expected it to do. Okay, yeah, there you go. Uh, notice that the ball has a little extra space around it. So I'm going to go ahead and actually edit this and show you what I mean. Um, okay, here I have PaintShop Pro, and you'll notice uh, PaintShop Pro shows you the transparency and so forth. Uh, you notice the edge is here, and that's why it's not bouncing the way we, we really think it should. So what I'm going to do is crop this image. I'm not much of an okay, I'm gonna save that guy. Okay, now I'm gonna have to re-import that into Visual Studio. So here let's kill this. Let me get rid of this. Okay, yes. And let me just make sure that here's my ball image. And put that back in there. So by cropping that, so the edges. or close up against the actual image, you see it bounces more like what you think. Now that's actually pretty slow bounce, okay? 
So let's speed up the bounce. How do you suppose you'd speed up the bounce? It's easy. You change these x dir and y dir values. So let's change them to 2. Should go twice as fast. There you go. Twice as fast. Okay, so this is actually an important exercise because it shows you how to move stuff on around on the screen. And really, all you're doing to move stuff around on the screen is you're changing its value. There's the x coordinate of the ball. All you have to do is change that value. All you have to do is change the y value. So this changes the x value. This changes the y value. This code simply checks to see if it's off the right right hand side of the screen or the left hand side of the screen. This simply checks to see if it's on the off the top or on the bottom side of the screen. 